Let's let's start out though with Ken Klukowski with the ACRU, the American Civil Rights Union, which is a conservative think tank and advocacy organization. The ACRU.org, the website uh, protecting the civil rights of all Americans. Their slogan. Ken, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. You co-authored this piece with uh, Ken Blackwell of uh, Ohio fame, who's also been on this program, and. Uh, titled The Problem with the Republican Party. And this is the second of uh, a series of three excerpts from uh, Resurgent, How Constitutional Conservatism Can Save America, and uh, which is which you're the co-author of, if I, if I have this right, Ken? That's correct. Okay, you're a fellow and senior analyst at the ACRU, legal analyst, analyst and policy consultant specializing in the Constitution. Um, just a quick question, are you an attorney, Ken? Yes, I am. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Someday we should talk about why Marbury versus Madison was wrongly decided in 1803, and there should be no such thing as judicial review. Why Why Phyllis Schlafly and I agree, but not right now. That um, would be an interesting conversation. We do discuss that in Resurgent, incidentally, but go right ahead. You do? Do you, uh, yeah, do you agree with Thomas Marbury Jefferson? and the power of judicial review. Yeah. Do you agree with Thomas Jefferson that the Marbury case uh, gave the, uh, turned the Constitution into a thing of wax in the hands of the one unelected branch of government? Uh, no, because it's not what Thomas Jefferson thought 10 years before that when he was not president, so it was not his acts being gored. And not only that, in the case of, I, I guess we'll just take 30 seconds, in the case of Marbury, you had a person who filed a lawsuit at the Supreme Court because a federal law said he could. The Supreme Court noted that Article 3 of the Constitution only allowed it con- to consider appeals, right. not original lawsuits. Right. So do you think the Supreme Court should have been able to decide that lawsuit when the Constitution didn't give it jurisdiction? Because that's what Marbury v. Madison was all about. Yes. Uh, I, I believe that what the Supreme Court should have said was this law under, you know, first of all, what we're talking about is the Judiciary Act of 1796 versus the Judiciary Act of 1801 which were in conflict with each other, and whether or not the commission physically had to be delivered by James Madison, the Secretary of State, to William Marbury, who had been given a Justice of the Peace as one of the midnight judges, the 59 positions that John Adams created the week that he was leaving office to stick Thomas Jefferson with a bunch of Federalists. And and uh, bottom line, what the court should have done is what the court did in all previous decisions and what the court did in every other decision in the John Marshall Court for the next 35 years. They never again used judicial review. What the court should have done is said, uh, we are going to either decide or not decide this based on this law, which is on the books. We are of the opinion that this law is unconstitutional, and we recommend that the branch of government that writes laws that is answerable to the people, because we're not, that the, the Congress should seriously consider rewriting this law and making it constitutional. But there's nothing in the Constitution that gives the Supreme Court the right to declare a law constitutional and undo and, and basically make or destroy law. So in the case of Marbury v. Madison, you believe that the Supreme Court should have decided a case where the Constitution gave it no jurisdiction over the case? No, I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they should have decided to not decide the case because they had no jurisdiction. Actually, arguably, right, they did well, have jurisdiction. Actually, but that was, that was actually the issue. The issue was this man was demanding that the Supreme Court decide his case right. because this federal statute said it could. Right. And the Supreme Court came back saying, whoa, wait a second. You filed your lawsuit papers here at the Supreme Court. We know that that statute said you could. But the U.S. Constitution says that unless it's one state suing another, Unless it's that, this court only has power to hear appeals from That's lower correct, courts. and so you what they did was they took court. on to themselves a power that they didn't have, which was the power of judicial review. And what they should have said is, we cannot, under this law, under the, under the, under the Judiciary Act of 1796, we cannot be the ones who decide this law, and, or, or we could be the ones who decide this law, and, but we don't think that we should under the Constitution. So I think that they should have decided it under the law, and they should have noted that the law is unconstitutional, and they should have recommended that the branch of government that makes law revisit the law. So if a state passes a law banning all abortions, you're okay with the Supreme Court not striking it down because they don't have the power to decide things like yes, that? Yes, absolutely. I, I, believe that, I, I believe that Roe v. Raid was wrongly decided and that the court should not have had the power to do that. And I also, and, and, and the same thing with Dred Scott, the same thing with, with uh, Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad, and the same thing with, with Marbury versus Madison. Well, we started with Marbury versus, the same thing with uh, Plessy versus Ferguson. 
The same thing with Brown v. Board. I That's think that the good theory. things that aside the court has Santa done over Clara, the years... Incidentally, Tom, aside from Santa Clara, we talk about every single one of the cases you just mentioned in Resurgent. And, and, and Buckley v. Vallejo and, and, well. and, and First National Bank v. Bellotti. I mean, this, basically, no, for example, right now we have, a, we have a situation where corporations are claiming the rights of persons to throw money into politics. Right, no which is what, which legislature, what the Supreme Court uh, no, uh, affirmed in Bellotti, which you just mentioned. That's right. Bellotti, Bellotti was the was the second piece of the of uh, the second major piece of the modern era of the long d- DNA of that Buckley versus you know really set that up, but but basically no legislature, no member of Congress in the history of the United States has ever said that corporations should have rights as persons. No president has ever signed a piece of legislation or even proposed a piece of legislation that says corporations should have rights as persons or that speech is money because corporations don't have mouths and so the only way they can speak is with money. Well, no elected of official has ever said cor- that. Corporation is Latin for body. The definition of a corporation is is a person other than a natural person. No, corporation is not lat- Latin for body. A corporation derives from corpus, which is Latin for body. Right. And 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 yes, we have always acknowledged that there are artificial persons and natural persons and exactly and the 14th amendment failed to make that distinction and that's the basis of this argument but it's a nonsense description because if you read the first sentence of the 14th amendment it says all persons born or naturalized in the united states are citizens thereof and then it says no person uh, in the united states shall be denied equal protection under the law obviously they're well, talking the about human amendment, beings though tom only applies to the states not to the not to the federal government that was to incorporate certain provisions of the federal constitution no the 14th the amendment absolutely applied to the federal government it was part of the three amendments 13th 14th and 15th passed during reconstruction to strip slavery out of the constitution no, the 13th Amendment, and we discuss all this in Resurgent as well. I know we're going a bit afield, far afield here. We, we have, and we're down to a minute left. Well, we're going to have to have our debate Amendment about the Republican Party. Slavery. The 14th Amendment reshuffled the federal state balance of power in the Constitution. That comes up in Chapters 5. Yes, I, I don't disagree with you. We went from before the Civil War, a strong state, weak federal government, to after the Civil War, a strong federal government, weak state form of government. The 14th Amendment played a big role in that. I'll and agree with you on that. for your listeners, all this is in the book. Okay, so Ken, you, you, you've plugged your book quite well well here. Uh, The book is uh, Resurgent, How Constitutional Conservatism Can uh, Save America. And if you're with me on Marbury, although I don't think you are, uh, I'm not with you on Marbury, okay, but well, I respect your... Then, uh, then, then you're thoughts. opposing Phyllis Schlafly as well. She's with me on Marbury. Ken Klukowski, VACRU.org. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, live to fight another day, Ken. I'll Thank look you. forward to it.